right? Let's look a bit, a bit on your exam format. So we say this a uh, long, long time ago when we first started. But you know that time you look at things no meaning to you. But now it become very meaningful because you will actually know what you do, what you're gonna do. Okay, okay, okay. Now your your questions come with your exam come with five questions. That question one will be a case study. Okay. So actually all the, the few questions also got case. But the question one case tends to be a bit longer, a bit longer, okay? And they claim that question one has to be a procedures question. That means whatever you do in question one, it will involve auditing procedure. So what do you mean by auditing procedure? That means anything that the exam questions will carry a word, audit procedure. So which usually can be test of control or it can be substantive procedure, okay? Now, as you can see here, this is a 30 marks question. Huh? Question one is 30 marks. That 30 marks questions covers on what? Now, it covers on risk, okay? So a theory. Now, a every question you see, they normally carry five marks that is based on memory study hard kind of area don't need you to read the case or so you can do one see like explain audit reason component that one is very easy we will do this in the last tutorial huh? that's usually my style okay now then they say using the minutes look at the risk and explain the response so the risk and explain response so risk you must look at the case and every risk you must ask yourself what you're going to do that's why when you respond to a risk, you are actually writing procedure, okay? Now then they say that identify the main area that you include in the audit strategy and then D is the substantive procedure, okay? So they ask you to give substantive procedure on three matters which include the 5 million expenditure on improving the production process, the 1.5 million allowance and the damaged inventory. So you're auditing various parts of the financial statement, okay? Now, question two is always a 10 marks requirement. It will be, again, a 10 marks with many parts. And that many parts will be all theory, no case study over here. Now, this is another 10 marks that you just have to study hard. You're definitely going to get the answer, okay? Now, so you see, you can see that they ask us about reliability, then the procedures that you want to do over review, okay? Then what is TOC, what is SP, okay? Now, then question three, four, five is again case study on different area. Now, I showed these uh, questions to you before. Uh, this is a 20 marks question that they ask about these uh, the dispatch systems, the WCR. And then here, they ask you about <coughs> procedures before you accept the audit. And then after that, they talk about ethical risks, okay? And then the last one will always be one finalizing audit okay so the last questions is always from what we did last class audit report <coughs> now we started with two area right we started with subsequent event and also going concern now these are all part of finalizing audit now you can see these questions is about what <coughs> they ask about reporting the opening balance okay and then they talk about reliance of the work and then they say from the audit report extract explain the elements that require amendment because the reports got mistake so they would like you to correct the mistake so this is actually an audit report question uh, which is one of the area that you do in finalizing audit okay now so this is how the five questions going to be okay we're going to see one of those questions from june 2010 uh, i just picked some various questions to do with you okay now <clears throat> So here I will do a few sets with you. Then uh, I, I actually have the last last sitting tutorial that is still there in the YouTube. So that means if all in you add up, you got about five or six classes that, that you can go and watch. So if you go through all that, actually you do quite a number of questions before we go for the revision. Huh? Okay, but it's about whether you want to put in the time because you know you're going to spend time and w watching a video is not like watching a, a movie I don't think you enjoy it so much okay so if you yeah huh? 
link [ah] I I give you I'll give you [ah] okay so it's actually there that one is not hidden is open you can go to my channel is there [ah] okay right so look at this requirement here okay so 30 marks questions what is it that the examiner is asking now a yeah uh, it's very important you read the the examiner's requirement so that you know exactly what they want to ask now if you see the requirement here and immediately you remember the requirement that i just showed you just now with the last exam question you notice that it something similar right uh, of course the story is different but they are basically asking more or less the same thing again and again so i can tell you the examiner must have taken this exam and then use it as a basis to design the exam questions for last exam now if you don't don't remember just now remember when we look at question two they ask you to define test of control substantive procedure now you see here also got test of control substantive procedure you see now now so probably i don't know okay as an examiner you also need ideas man. and sometimes you'll be thinking that just look back into the past year and say uh, okay at this time i long time never test okay i, I want to test this time so i'll use back something like that as an idea to write the questions for this coming exam so that's why when you go through your past year you bound to come across some requirement that you're going to see them in this coming june that once you have that your feeling is going to be real good hey i tried this before like, then more or less you know what to do Okay, now, so they ask us to identify and explain the risk. So identify the risk, okay, and then you must explain the audit risk at the planning stage of smooth brush paint company. Now, identifying risk, okay, usually when we talk about audit risk, the key component that we want you to identify is what risk? is the risk of mm correct no? mainly is the risk of mm which is what risk inherent and control detection and look out all it you're saying okay inherent and control all right now so inherent and control risk are risk that coming from the client it's not from you okay now the one that come from you is detection risk so usually when we ask you to identify risk, the main bug, okay, the main chunk of it will come from here. Alright, so it will be risk of MM. But when you say explain, what do you mean by explain again? Now explain is how you link the risk, how you link the risk to how it creates the MM. Since you say this is a risk of MM, then you must link to how the risk creates the MM. Now, if you can't bring the link, your answer is incorrect or incomplete. This is very hard for the examiner to give marks to you, okay? And you can see that this is a 10 marks requirement. So as a 10 marks requirement, usually we are expecting like what? Now, you must look at the case. Uh. If the case give you a lot of reason, uh, so sometimes you find that you might need to, to give up to maybe 10 points. With 10 identification and 10 explanation but in most cases you find that you don't have to do up to 10 because most of the time things that to do with application of case study they will give you one mark okay so in that case we are looking at five point all right one mark identification one mark explanation okay now so if you if you have a guide with you all right then more or less you know how much you need to write in the answer then once you have enough point, then you stop. Understand? Huh? Once you have enough point, then you stop. Okay. Now then they ask in B that discuss what's the importance of assessing risk when you do planning. Now why must we assess risk? Well, I think you should know why. Right? What's the purpose of assessing risk? What kind of audit approach that we are using? We have a term called what? What approach is that? The approach that we do all is it every client you use the same approach no right you didn't use the same approach so what approach do you call that <coughs> risk based the approach is called risk based and if you don't assess risk you realize that you cannot focus so this is a very theoretical question asking you about concept we are asking about concept that if you understand the concept in auditing and what is called risk based auditing this is pretty straightforward okay 
Now then C, they say, identify, lease and explain a suitable control. Lease and explain a control that should operate over the continuous perpetual inventory counting system that will make sure that there's completeness and accuracy of the existing inventory record. Now, I, I'm asking you the control that I need in their inventory counting. Okay, so what control do you need in inventory counting? Now, actually a lot of things comes from where? Come from auditing inventory. Because when you learn auditing inventory, we talk about before you audit the inventory or the stock take, right? You must ask for a plan from the management. Then when you ask for a plan from the management, your duty is to go through the plan and see what is the right things to do and if there's anything not right, you must tell the management. So when you learn that, then that knowledge is what you need here because he's talking about control, how you should do the inventory count, okay? Now then they say, describe three. Now they ask for three. So you just need three, okay? Now describe three substantive procedure. So we, we're talking about describing, not list and not briefly explain. So you don't write an answer with only seven to eight words. Okay, you, you must write a bit long so that you can carry a description element that you will do to confirm inventory valuation. That be how do you audit the inventory of your stock? Well, that's very easy, right? Auditing inventory. We're talking about auditing the valuation, not even auditing cost on you. So audit valuation of inventory requires you testing the cost testing NRV and the cause element got so many things and I'm asking for three you see you got plenty of answers you can write here but you just need three okay now then they say how do you audit completeness of provision or contingent liability so provision contingency is two different things but they're talking about completeness that means you're, you're talking about detecting okay maybe the management is hiding from you right that there's someone suing them that they don't want you to know so they're hiding so how do you detect that they're hiding all these things so you talk about what completeness okay now let's read the case huh? so in the exam when you read up something please don't read for the sake of reading read for the sake of reading means you read then after you finish reading your mind is blank you know what, what happened? Right? You read, 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 read. You just read. You know, you're reading like you're just doing reading exam. Like that. Read, 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 read. So don't go through the break. So after you read, uh, you cover up. What have you just read? Okay, I do a very simple test. Part A, what they ask? Risk. Okay, they ask you to identify risk. Okay, uh, if you can, you can tell me that means you remember and you actually digested what you have read. What's part B? Risk also. <laughs> they're asking controls, right? You know, okay, they're asking controls, all right? So what kind of controls that you need in inventory counting? So that's why it's very important. So in the exam, I, I really suggest that after you read the requirement, before you go and read the case, you just pause for a while and ask again. Hey, You just ask yourself again. So when you ask yourself again, it's very important to give yourself a clear mind that, oh, okay, okay, I know what they, are, they want, you know? So, Please do that. Uh, it, it helps you to interpret and, and analyze the questions better. Okay, so again, risk, the concept of why it says risk, the control, all right, the procedure. Okay, now we look at the case study. Yeah? Okay, now you are the audit senior in a firm called Stapler, and now you are commencing the planning of audit of smooth brush paint. That's your client. Okay, Smooth is a pain manufacturer. They produce pain, uh, they're like ICI, like that. Uh, okay, and they have been trading for over 50 years. That means it's a very old business, all right? They are very old business. It operates from one central site, which includes the production facility, the warehouse, and the administration offices. Smooth sells all of his goods to large improvement store 
with 60% being to one large chain store homeware. That means they don't sell to, to individuals. Eh? They are a big companies that they sell to all these big stores. Like the example, maybe Tesco buy from them, Ace Hardware buy from them. That's what I read. Eh? Okay? And they tell us that 60% of your sales goes to one particular customer. That shows a very strong dependency with this customer. Is it not? Huh? Okay? Now, the company has one year contract to be the sole supplier of paint to homeware. That means this 60% customer has already signed a one year contract that they will buy from them, buy, buy from Smooth. Now, it secured the contract through significantly reducing prices. That's how they managed to get the contract. They have, they have cut prices. Plus, they have offered four-month credit when their normal credit period is usually one month. Okay? Now, go on. In recent years, Smooth has reduced the level of goods directly manufactured and instead started to import paint from South Asia. And approximately 60% is imported, 40% manufactured. So now they put more reliance to buy than to make on their own. So they're doing trading rather than manufacturing. Okay? Within the production facility is a large amount of old plant and equipment. So they're very old machine that is now redundant and has very minimal scrap value. Okay, well, that, that's probably because now you have most of your paint purchased or imported, then you make it on your own. So a lot of these machines, you don't use them anymore. Now, purchase orders for overseas paint are made six months in advance, and goods can be in transit up to two months. And smooth accounts for inventory when they receive the goods. To avoid the disruptions of a year-end inventory count, smooth has this year introduced a continuous or perpetual inventory counting system. So they're going to do a count on a continuous basis. Okay. Now, the warehouse has been divided into 12 areas. And these are each to be counted once a year. So they rotate. Like I've told you all before, right? When you do a, a perpetual count, you don't have to count everything. Instead, you count area by area, so you rotate, okay? Now, the counting teams include a member of the internal audit department and a warehouse staff member, and the following procedures have been adopted. The team prints the inventory quantity and description from the system and that these records are then compared with the inventory physically present, which you know this is a, a very big issue, right? Weakness, huh? how can you show quantity, right? Uh, you, you know that, okay? Now, any discrepancies in relation to the quantities are noted on the inventory sheets, including items not listed on the sheets, but they are present in the warehouse. Any damage or old items are noted, and they are removed from the inventory sheets. The sheets are then passed to the finance department for adjustment to be made to the records when the count has finished. During the counts, there will continue to be inventory movement. So while you are counting, they will still have inventory movement with goods arriving and leaving the warehouse. Now at the year end, it is proposed that the inventory will be based on the underlying record. Traditionally, Smooth has maintained an inventory provision based on 1% of the inventory value, but the management feels that the inventory is being reviewed more regularly that it needs, it no longer needs the provision, that they don't, they, they don't make provision anymore. Now, the finance director mentioned something that they say, it may Smooth had a dispute with the finance director and he immediately left the company. Well, does it may, right? What's the year end of the company? It's August, uh, correct? Uh? That means five, six, seven, eight. Uh. So they are one. Uh, they're, they're one quarter towards the end. The last quarter four. Uh, that the finance director is not there. The company has temporarily asked the finance controller to take over the role while they recruit a permanent replacement. 
The old finance director notifies Move that he intends to sue for unfair dismissal. And the company is not proposing to make any provision or disclosure for this as they are confident that the claim has no merit. Okay? Now, so that, that's a case study. So now, what they want us to do here is A, the risk. Okay? Now, this is uh, questions about identifying risk. Okay, it's very popular requirement in the exam. So when you identify risk, you must un understand that which part of the risk that you would like to relate them under. Okay, so usually we will relate the risk under risk of MM. The one that we did in the class previously is the question for Parker. Okay, something like that. Now, so when you identify the risk, you must explain. Fair enough, you must explain. So they're asking for identifying and then you explain. So when you explain the risk, explain how risk cost MM. That's what you must do when you're explaining, okay? How risk cost MM. So ideally, the, the answer should be presented in a table, okay? That means when you write your answer, right, you will put down your risk and then you explain. Then the risk again, then you explain. Now ideally, this is the best way of presenting the answer, that it will be the best for the examiner to mark the answer. Follow on, okay? Now, but in the class, I won't do like that. Because I do like that, then you got to waste a lot of my time to wait for you all to, to copy the answer one part and not the other. So I'll just do it vertically all the way down, okay? Now, first of all, uh, okay, the first risk that we see here is what? Now, they say that they are selling to one store which accounts for 60% of the revenue that the contract is obtained with significant discount. Now actually there are two issues here, right? Now of course one of you might say that uh, uh, there's issue of what dependency. You depend with only one customer, you know? Now, but that should not be a very big problem because the contract is already one year contract. Uh, if you say that you depend on the customer and there's no contract, then of course, yes, you, you got to be worried. Yes, you know? and, and going concern is only about next one year. So it's not something like two or three years. Yes, you know? So if the next one year is covered, then we are not bothered. Yes, you know? But the other issues that I think it concerns me is the word called significant discount. Now, what has the discount here to do with the risk of MM? The discount will affect what? Huh? Sales, uh, discount affects sales. Uh. No, discount is not affecting sales. Discount is affecting your inventory valuation. Correct. Because when you give substantial discount on the pain, what if the discount is so big that the discount after you've given them, uh, the selling price is below your cost? If you're selling price below your cost, then your inventory valuation is affected. So I don't know whether this is happening or not, but from what you tell me, the first thing it crossed my mind is, wow, what if you sell below cost? Then when I audit the inventory, I must be very careful. Because you're not, okay? So this is the first thing, I'm going to pick it up over here, that I just put SP here. Yeah. Okay? That means uh, smooth brush paint has secured a one-year contract from Homeware which accounts for 60% of its revenue by offering substantial discount. Now, this is identifying. Okay, that's identifying. So I'm going to explain, right? Now, of 
bring substantial discount on SP products might lead to risk of inventory being sold below cost and therefore creating a greater risk of inventory valuation to be misstated so how that the inventory valuation can be misstated so if you think that there is a necessity to explain your point then you can just put in bracket to say that because inventory is value at lower of cost and NRV. Okay, now there's another thing that they offer to their customer to secure the contract. That besides offering discount, what else that they offer? Uh, they offer a longer credit term, right? So when we talk about longer credit term, what cross your mind? When you offer a very long credit term, what cross your mind? The problem of what? Yeah, the doubtful debt, right? Because you know. Now you offer one month, then I, I can evaluate whether they can pay you. Uh, because one month only, hold on, okay? Now, but if you offer four months, uh, then it's a bit difficult later for me to assess if the amount is recoverable because by the by the time comes to the year end you can still see those debts which are four months old five months old but then because you give a four months credit even if it's five months old it's still normal so it's going to be more difficult now for you to assess whether the debt is doubtful or not doubtful. okay now so this is another issues that we see okay number two sp has offered a longer than usual credit term up to four months than the usual one month to homes way. Okay, now, so we can argue the problem here is the credit risk. So offering a longer credit term to customers increases the credit risk of Okay, so that's the problem that they're going to have. They, they're going to have higher credit risk. Okay, and credit risk is risk that debtors cannot pay. All right, so in turn, it increases the risk of MM when SP fail to make allowance for irrecoverable debts. Okay, now that's the issue, right? When you fail to allow for irrecoverable debt, then the debtors become overstated. So this is the risk that we are seeing right now, okay? Right, that's number two. Okay, number three, yeah? 
Now they they did mention that they will now buy or import the paints that they no longer manufacture, and as a result of the new strategies, they mentioned that a lot of the plant and equipment become redundant. And what's the issue when they say there's a lot of plant become redundant? redundant? What risk is that? Your assets are there, right? You, you invested on a lot of machines. That I believe that all these machines will appear as what? PPE balance, correct? Right now, if the machines are all part of your PPE balance, then if you tell me that now you don't use the machine, and most of them they say are so old that they are having minimal scrap value. Now, if you've got no scrap value, but never mind, you must have value in use, right? But if you also got no value in use, you've got no scrap value, then the machines is what? So fast, here the idea. Here the idea, so fast. Okay. Now, then the machines become what? What word is that? Hello, what word is that? Hello? The machines become? It is an accounting term, eh? Fully utilized. Fully utilized. You really fully utilize me, huh? Okay. <laughs> the machines become impair. Uh. There's an impairment, uh, right now. There's an impairment. Uh. We're, we're talking about impairment of your assets right now. And what's wrong when you have an impairment of an asset? Have you reviewed impairment or not? I don't know. I really don't know. Because the questions never say anything. They just say that there's a lot of machines are not being used. They're left there. They are old. They are redundant. Okay. So we are looking at the risk of impairment. Okay. Now. SP move into a new strategy to import its products then to manufacture them on its own. About 60% of its sales are fulfilled based on the imported product. That I'm trying to say here is, is a very significant proportion that more than half of the factory now is not being used. Okay, now as a result of this, that consequently, uh, a lot of its plant equipment. But you don't use it, right? so the value in use is zero. Okay, and it is said that they have very minimal scrap value too. So this increases. Risk of your plant equipment. I just put OS uh, to be overstated when SP fail to recognize. It's impairment loss. So this is how the financial statements are being affected. <coughs> okay. 
Now, if you if go on, they did mention issues like they order goods which might take up to six months and two months of transit. Now, all these can be issues that affects cut off. Lah. Okay, the the lead, lead time can be an issue of cut off. All right. Now. See, I got more points, I just need five points here. So probably I can go on and write something more significant. Okay, so I may not want to touch on that. I think I will put a, an answer on the point that they say they will not do a year-end inventory count, which I think is a big issue that affects the inventory quantity. Uh, so if you don't do year-end inventory count, you may not know you have the stocks with you or not. Okay. Plus, if you have the problem of these two months lead time and so on, it can be even more risky that the cutoff errors are not being detected. Okay, so, so I think th this is one issue. I'll touch on the no year end inventory count. Then I will touch on the last point that the finance director is suing the company. Uh, when they sue the company, the issue is what? Is an accounting estimate. Fair enough? Is an accounting estimate. And the directors already indicated that they will not provide. Plus, they will not even disclose. Uh. So I think that's very risky, right? At least you disclose and say contingent. I think I, I'm a bit acceptable. You say you totally ignore it. Well, then that's really risky. That what if the directors are wrong? Okay. So that's why here is another issue. That that will made up my five point. Then enough idea. I just need five point. Okay. Uh, then then you go on. Okay. Now. Number four. Okay. SP will introduce perpetual inventory count and do away with the year end inventory count. Okay, now, without a year-end inventory count, it is of greater risk that the inventory quantity could be materially misstated since the book or the record balance might consist of discrepancies with the physical balance. You may have your inventory being missing, stolen, all right? Okay, last point, number five, okay? So the finance director has commenced a litigation against SP for unfair dismissal. Directors decided to ignore it in the financial statement. Okay, now estimating the outcome of the litigation is a matter of high estimation uncertainty. Okay? And the accounting treatment is wholly dependent on 
the rest teammate of such outcome. So there is high risk that unreasonable estimate leading to the litigation to be treated inappropriately in the financial statement. So now part B, they are asking about discussion. It's very important, you must see what they ask over here. Okay? So if the requirement is about discussing, then what we try to do to, to answer the requirement is to give them something a little bit more detailed than just listing. Okay? So if you list, then it's very straightforward to, to, to the answers that your point is not much elaborated. But here you try to elaborate the point, all right? So we try to give four points uh, with four marks. So you try to give four points. That the four point that must be a bit well elaborated. Now, so why do you why do you assess risk? Now we assess risk is because the purpose is number one. We want to understand the entity. Okay. Now, so this number one. Auditor assesses risk of MM at planning in order to gain more understanding of its entity. Okay? Now, so why do you need to understand? Now, the understandings are important so that you can design the audit, okay? So it is important to establish Audit strategies and make key decision like setting materiality. See, I, I try to put in an issue of discussion because they say discuss. Man. Okay, see, I don't know at the end the answers the examiner gave me is going to be long or short. You never know that. There's something you never know. Because you're going for an exam that there will be no answer for you. So you have to answer in such a way that I don't care what you have at the back, but I just do the right thing. The right thing is I always do it according to what you ask. I don't mind if I do more. So that's why you want me to discuss? Okay, I give you a discussion point. So I identify the main issue of what I need to do. So I try to understand. And why do you want to understand? So I, I try to elaborate. Why do you want to understand? So I try to understand because, example, it will help me to set material. Okay? Now that's one point. Okay. Now we still go on. Eh? We still go on. And why do you want to assess risk? Is one thing is called risk based on. Okay? Now the approach auditor uses is risk-based 
auditing okay what is a risk-based auditing it is an approach where audit shall be completed to achieve an acceptably low audit risk so auditor shall <coughs> identify which components of financial statement carry a greater risk of MM. Through risk assessment. So why do I assess risk? Because I'm telling you that we are doing a risk-based approach. That this approach requires us to achieve something called low audit risk. But this approach requires us to know which part of the financial statement carry greater risk. So to do that, you must assess risk. So there's another reason of why I discuss over here, why we do risk assessment. Okay? Now, With risk of MM being assessed, auditor shall determine the level of detection risk and then design nature, timing and extent of audit procedure in responding to the accessories at the assertion level. Okay, so we know that once you do assessment of risk, then you will know detection risk, and then with detection risk, you can design and okay. Now, so the concept of risk assessment is all that, right? Okay. Now, then, what else can you mention here about concept of risk assessment? Now, of course, the concept is also important. Like, for example, it affects us in terms of determining who should you assign to the audit do you want to use a more experienced staff or less experienced staff now all, all that decision come from assessing risk now assessing risk also is important for us to identify significant risk because when you don't assess risk you don't know what risk is significant and significant risk must be given different attention so that's why you can all answer all this as part of the concept over here there's a lot of answers you can write in B1 okay so anything you write as long as it makes sense they are also correct okay now number four that I got no, no space I just write down the point okay that when you assess risk you identify the significant risk of the audit that you must give special audit consideration. Uh, this way is probably a good way of telling you that this is what we call writing coin. You're not you're not writing a full answer, you're just giving bullet list. One one keyword, keyword, keyword. Now this kind of answer no marks. Zero. Uh, okay. I'm still writing point, one point, two point, three point, but I'm not writing a bullet list. I'm writing a full elaborate answer because they asked me to discuss. Okay, uh, you write like that, I'm uh, sorry, you sure get zero. Okay, now, this is what we have here in part B. Okay, now go on to part C. Uh. 
now what they're asking now is they're asking for control okay they say list down the control and then explain the control that you need to operate in terms of inventory count okay so i think we we try to use a way of getting the answer so what is it that they are asking over here now they are asking in part c the control for inventory count so that you can support completeness accuracy of the count how do you make sure that the count will be accurately conducted okay now example one. the control and their explanation okay so how do you control the inventory counting now of course one example that or one important control we need is like segregation of duty which we can see that they did maintain the segregation they are not asking you to evaluate the the weaknesses in their count procedure okay so please don't do things that they don't ask i scared the student what they do is after they read the case study like we just now say hey something that you shouldn't do wow then you thoroughly go and explain that this is wrong that is wrong and we are not asking that so please don't do unwanted things okay i know even though you look at it you say oh i know what this is wrong and this is wrong but i'm not asking you to evaluate i'm just asking you tell me what controls do you need okay so one control i think probably we need here is segregation of duty okay now so there shall be adequate segregation of duty in the planning and counting process okay. so I, I need that as a control so I explain, say I use a table, right? Because in exam, ideally, you always write that, okay? Now, what do you mean by segregation of duty? And why do you need segregation of duty? Now, the meaning of segregation of duty is SP shall never allow the warehouse personnel to plan the count or to perform the count on its own okay that you should not do it on your own or else it is easy for them to conceal irregularities like what like maybe theft of the paint okay the staff probably can steal the paint and they keep quiet then because when they do the count they purposely tell you that yeah the pains are still there it's the same as the record now okay see they, they did mention that they will want to do the, the inventory count by splitting the area into 12 so that they will count different area now we believe that this kind of issue 
it will be the best if it's under the purview or control by the internal audit. Okay, so let the internal audit plan so that the internal auditors can incorporate a risk-based approach in the inventory count, like maybe which area that they should count more often, which area that you should focus at, say how do you rotate. Now this is an important control. So we let the internal auditor take charge. All right. Now a control is maybe to allow the internal auditor to take charge of the count frequency and rotation. Like which area to be counted. Now, see SP will split the warehouse into 12 area and count them rotationally so it is important to ensure that all areas are counted and the internal auditor is more objective in ensuring high risk area or material inventory items to be focused more okay now they did mention that the inventory <coughs> count will be that the count sheets will be printed out and then it will have the, the quantity, okay? So I think an important control for this respect is you cannot show the quantity, okay? So that is the team. They say the team print out the inventory quantity and description from the system. Now, so this is another issue. So as an important control, maybe a count leader or a supervisor okay? and that count leader or supervisor should not be from the warehouse okay? a count leader not from the warehouse to have control over preparing and distributing the count sheets push up one okay now this shall include relevant detail okay maybe like your stock code like the location uh, you go to Ikea you buy things uh, sometimes you see, see, see wow, wow this furniture very nice where are you going to find the furniture? that's why they tell you uh, go to which row, which aisle, which section so we must give you a number but then you can know where to find it so that's why you must have the relevant detail uh, so that they can go and identify the stock but not the stock quantity okay the inventory balance 
that's definitely cannot. Uh, that's the wrong thing to do. So that's why I think I must specify this as a control that you must not involve that. Okay. Now, including the ledger balance for the inventory quantity in the count sheets. Would lead to problems like what? Counters not counting the physical quantity. Okay, now you, you know the, the point I'm trying to say, like it's good or not. Then you just fill in any quantity that you like, or you may be spending time searching for missing stock which can delay the count process which is not what we intend you to do okay so this is another problem so you should try to take out that one so it's very important control that you must not include the balance now they they mentioned that The count sheets, the, the old and damaged items are noted and they are removed from the inventory sheets. Okay? That is not right to just remove them from the inventory sheets, fair enough. Because you must review the NRV and see whether that damaged old damage probably NRV is affected. But O may not be affected, so it may not be an issue, alright? So because pain so unless you tell me that the pain dry up then different okay but the the paint if it's still usable not expired then it's slow moving maybe the color not a very attractive color but it's okay you still can sell right so i think it's not right to just remove it so you should just review it so that's why the right thing to do is you should take note of it in the stock sheets all right now for the damaged and all inventory identified during the count then they should be taken note of its condition in the stock sheets And then subject to redeem. Now, see, it's likely that these inventory have NRV below cost and to be written down but only after a review is made by simply removing it from the stock sheets uh, would actually create a statement to your stock records Okay. Now see the other controls that we need, they did mention that during the count there will be continued inventory movement. 
So you probably have to mention that I don't want movements to happen on the day of the count because movement will increase the risk of error. Okay. Now I just put down a few more points here, some last point. Uh, okay. Now no movement because it will increase error. Okay. Now then you can also include issues like for example if after the count usually we have to write down the inventory. Okay. So maybe there must be some adjustment made for those stocks that they have been missing. Alright? Now so the adjusting the inventory record. Now it's important that there must be a segregation of duty is not from the warehouse. Now then you need to make sure that the internal audit will do the test of the count. It's part of the control as well, right? That's why internal auditors should be there. That the internal auditor should test the count. Okay? So how do you test the count? Now they want to make sure that there's a completeness of the recording. Now they say okay, that the objective here is completeness and accuracy. That means it's very important to make sure that if the stocks are there, they are reflected in the record. So that's why when we mention about testing the count, the key test is the internal auditor must take the physical stock, go to the stock sheets and check that whether the stocks are all included inside. Okay. Now these some other points you write on column. You just elaborate that. Now we just need five points here. Because it's only five, uh, 10 marks, huh? okay? So I just need five points, and that, that's more than enough answers for you to cover in part C, okay? Now look at B now. Okay, so the last things that they would like us to do now is the audit procedures. Huh? Now they would like us to do the audit for inventory valuation, all right? Inventory valuation. Now, you, you see, the the scope that you can explain in their answers are very wide. Because they are talking about inventory valuation. And not, not just the inventory cost. Okay? They're talking about inventory valuation. Okay. So when you audit inventory valuation, now I just give you an idea. Things that you can do is you can audit the cost, you can audit the NRV. Okay? So to audit cost is one thing we do, audit NRV is another thing we do, right? Now. It's different things, right? Huh? Correct, huh? And when you talk about auditing the cost, I hope you also see the issue that the stocks that you are having will come from two sources. One is the one that you you manufacture on your own. One is you import. It's very different. Huh? You manufacture on your own, you buy the raw materials, you gotta go through WIP, it becomes finished good. Okay? There's a lot of things you do. Alright? The the one you import is very easy. You just pay the amount and buy the things back. Okay, so you know? Now so that's why you, you, you break it up and see if you manufacture and you import. What can I do to audit the stock that I manufacture? To audit the stock that I import? To audit the NRV? Wow, there's a lot of things to write. Eh? And you only want me to write three. Eh? Where got enough? Is it, eh? you, you can write more. So that's why, if that's the case, I would suggest you smart a bit. You try to show answer as three answer. Okay? Because you have a lot of things to write. Man. So you show three answer. How to show three answer? Okay, I will put number one. One answer. Number one, uh -huh. number one. Okay. Now I will lump my answer together with the issue. Okay. Number one, I say for the manufactured paints. Okay, for the manufactured paints. Auditor shall confirm the 
its purchase cost to the purchase invoices and agree the wages charged to production to the payroll cost and now they have changed their capacity a lot so make sure that you have to reflect a normal capacity okay that all overheads shall be allocated to product based on normal activity level so confirm that the activity level used it's at normal level now I I would say this is one point which theoretically is not one point okay so if the marker say hey, there's more than one point better still uh, that means you give me all the marks uh, okay, uh. if the marker say that one wow, you write too much uh, then I just give you one mark oh, so never mind Janji, I get the marks uh, okay, uh. so whether you say it's too too many or is enough or what I don't care uh, as long as I get what I want okay, uh, you know but of course the issue is you must be very fast no? if you are not those students that you know exactly what to do you want to sit down and think 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 you will do like that you cannot finish the exam really. so that's why you must practice more and get used to okay i i look at this i know what to do with it i think you should go and write the answer okay now so that that's the strategy that we try to employ huh? okay now this is for the manufactured paints okay for imported paints Okay. Again, inspect purchase invoices to confirm its purchase value. Okay. Now. Confirm that the inventory valuation is based on an acceptable method like FIFO and that is consistent with the past now then the, those stocks that we know that there are problem for the slow moving open we shall review the sales subsequent to the year end okay so then we can ascertain the actual NRV and confirm that management has not valued them above the enemy okay now so i just want three points so that's a very simple three points that we can cover over here okay but if you really break it up there's a lot of things we can write now but enough already 
Okay, so now part D, uh, number two. Okay, here we are asking you about the provisions or the contingent liability. Okay, now the provision of contingent liability may include the, the litigation that the finance director has taken against you or it may also include any other cases that usually for this kind of provision contingency what do you all do where are the key source of evidence that you can get information about this look at what look at what huh presentation presentation what presentation percentage ah you look at percentage ah I, I want you to detect. I'm not talking about assessing whether the, the thing is contingent or problem. <coughs> How do you detect? How do you know that there's a problem like people sue you and so on? Where do you find? Huh? Legal fee, you can review the legal fee, some more. You can read the minutes, some more. Payroll, ah. you look at the payroll for what? Inquiry, you inquire who? The management. Come on. That's it. Ah? Yeah, inquire legal counsel, but the word inquire is not right. You must use a better word. It's not inquire. The legal counsel, as in the lawyer, like, what do you do with the lawyer? Someone external, what do you do? Request what? The, what's the word? Ah, you give me the word. I want the word. Don't give me all other words that is like that, but I want the exact word. There's one word we use in audit. Start with C ah, hello. Consult ah. No la consult what? There's a word confirmation. I will use technical word lah. Please lah. Confirm lah. Confirm. Confirm is the word we use in audit, right? You confirm with their lawyer, okay? Then also one more very important thing that you must get the directors to do one. Signature. signature. Very good. You get the directors to give you a signature. Signature <laughs> to sign the check so you get the money. Signature for what? Yeah, your point is very close, uh, but you are not exact. Uh. Your, your point is very close, but you don't exactly hit on the issue. Yes, you must ask for representation. Ask for signature. Whack you a signature, okay? <laughs> now, so these are the things that we do regarding the contingencies or provisions. Uh. Okay, number one. Now we can read minutes of the board meetings to identify if there's any claims made against SP. Okay, now in specific to the claim by finance director, discuss with the board. their assessment of the outcome. Okay? Now. Perform confirmation with SP Legal Counsel on all litigation cases that it is acting on behalf now we, we don't just confirm the litigation we must confirm reasonableness of the management's assessment as well as 
the reasonableness of the management's assessment of the outcome. Okay, it's very important. That's why you confirm, you must know what do you want to confirm. Okay, now number three, seek a written representation from the board confirming that now there's, there's a lot of things you can get them to confirm now number one they have disclosed all the contingencies or provision matters to the auditor okay so they have not hidden anything from you you just get them to confirm on that now, number two, they should confirm that their assessment of the outcome pertaining to these issues are reasonable and that the matters are correctly treated appropriately treated in the financial statement now see you when you write the answers you will have a feeling like eh, there's a lot of things i can do you know but like the answers are not finished okay but it's okay uh, you must understand because the question asks for three uh, but you learn that time you see there's so many things you do that like just like you say what well, review the legal fee the legal expense inquire of the management because you know go through all these record agreement there's a lot of things you do but why i didn't write in the answer because they say three things uh, so you just give any three that you believe is the best one then you put it in so don't worry about your answer like hanging and not finish it doesn't matter okay, so not, okay? right so this is an example of a, a question one okay which shows a bit of what we learn in various chapters I, I think we take a break we'll come back then we'll see another question